The editorial board for the Wall Street Journal says the debt ceiling bill recently signed by the president into law is a cut on the U.S. military. The board writing U.S. spending on the military could fall below 3% of the economy for the first time since the height of the post-Cold War peace dividend in the late 1990s and adds the Biden budget shrinks the U.S. Navy to 286 ships by 2025 as China ramps up to a 400-strong fleet designed to subdue Taiwan. Here to talk more about it, retired U.S. Army Major General William Enyart. Uh, sir, as always, a pleasure. Thanks for being here. So how does this spending bill and the debt ceiling debate impact military readiness with some of these cuts? Well, good morning, Marnie. Uh, you know, that's an opinion piece by the Wall Street Journal. So that's the journal's uh, opinion. Uh, frankly, the debt ceiling budget deal uh, provides for a 3% increase in spending, defense spending, each year for the next two years. So to call that a decrease uh, requires assuming that inflation is going to uh, rise at over 3% for the next two years. Uh, current projections call for inflation to rise at somewhere between 2.6 and 2.7% per year, uh, which is in line, by the way, with historic uh, numbers. Uh, other than the COVID years of 2021 and 2022, the average for the last 20 years has been well under 2%. And we have both President Biden and Speaker McCarthy agreeing that the Pentagon is in fact receiving a budget increase. Uh, additionally, you need to keep in mind that Congress routinely provides the Pentagon more money than either the Pentagon requests or the president requests. Uh, you know, really a far greater problem than the uh, debt ceiling uh, uh, agreement is gouging by defense contractors uh, and misuse of resources by the military. Uh, and the Wall Street Journal really uh, didn't pay much attention to either one of those problems, although they did mention that the Pentagon could be a little more efficient. Uh, I think that focusing on cost controls uh, and on proper allocation of the money that uh, the Pentagon has already budgeted uh, would yield dividends that could uh, be invested in better equipment uh, as well as increased training for military members. Uh, as for China, uh, you need to look not just at the number of ships, but at the type of ships, uh, the quality of uh, training, the quality of the ships. Uh, the U.S. Uh, has uh, a far greater uh, worldwide capacity, naval capacity, than does China. Uh, our aircraft carrier fleet uh, outnumbers them better than five to one. Uh, speaking of the Chinese fleet, there was this close call in the Taiwanese Strait. Uh, what are you hearing about this? Well, you know, clearly this was uh, another example of the Chinese military uh, egregiously provoking uh, uh, peaceful U.S. Uh, ships and aircraft. You know, they the uh, fighter plane buzzed the uh, reconnaissance air force. The Chinese fighter plane buzzed the uh, air force reconnaissance plane the other day. Uh, also, the Chinese have just taken an increasingly aggressive uh, posture, and uh, as uh, the Secretary of Defense has pointed out. Uh, they need to rein these folks in because uh, these kind of uh, uh, disastrous uh, actions actions can really uh, lead to a problem. Uh, you know, if we have a, a major plane crash or, or a major uh, ship uh, crash, this is uh, going to be problematic. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.